What is going on, everybody? So, when the devs decided that double items were no longer going to be going to count for achievements, um, I was kind of annoyed because I didn't think that it was broken at all. And then I realized that this was mainly done on the backs of a couple things. One is the double owls. Um, another one was things like, um, like double turrets. Um, like double spin, spinny things, the uh, syringe, uh, double giant whistles, double uh, powerful grenades, things like that. But from that, one of the things that got affected was the boy's axe. So a popular build since 1.2 was actually the boy's axe build. So it would be uh, two boy's axes, and then it would end up being, you know, whatever you wanted from there. I ran it as a tactics build. You can also run it as a brutality build. Um, I liked them both. I, I ran I, on my channel. There is a 1.4 run of uh, Double Boys Axe build, and that is the uh, that's the Young Man build. Should be in my channel. I'll probably leave a link in the description, or um, if you look at the little eye, it should pop up there. Um, I'll try to remember to add it. If I don't, uh, just leave a comment, then I'll add it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and it it was a really fun run. So. When they took out the uh, ability for double items, unless like you go into custom mode and add it, then you were kind of screwed. So one of the things is I wanted to really start, you know, making these builds with what the devs wanted. So I can like the Vorpan run, for example, that's a really, really specific type of build. So I made an exception to that and I, and I ended up just like um, not having the 20 items as per usual. But with this, I wanted to, you know, put the 20 items back, but I have two things unlocked. I have the boys axe unlocked and I have the shrapnel axes unlocked. After that, it's just a bunch of skills. And so, I really enjoyed this run because I thought the boys axe would suck, honestly, after, um, you know, the change to what the devs wanted. So, what I ended up realizing is that boys axe is actually still really really good and when you pair it with another weapon that can do a lot of damage such as the shrapnel axes then you're left for a good time so what i mean by that is if you look at, if you think of the shrapnel axes as both a melee and a ranged weapon uh they both essentially serve the same function and that means that the shards are going to be hitting the enemy, but also at the same time, the melee is going to be doing a significant amount of damage too. So there's a lot of possibilities that you can run from doing that. And the melee attack is pretty dang powerful, I'll say. And I'm going to be just uh, running towards the exit because I have 30 and then I'm under 2 minutes and I grabbed all the scrolls. So anyway, so uh, Boy's Axe will snare the enemy and then I can just uh, start spamming the shrapnel axes. It's a 5 hit combination and... The 4th and 5th hits are a bit slower than the rest, so what ends up happening is you end up just getting that full combo up because the boys axe will snare the enemy, and then that'll essentially work as a way to uh, kind of uh, get what you are looking for with a shrapnel axis type of build. Um, on my channel, there's also a shrapnel axis and tentacle run that I really enjoyed. That was like a nearly perfect run. They only got hit like twice the entire time. And shrapnel axis is really, really good when it comes to uh, just the versatility of it. In my tier uh, list, I put it at like the top of A. I might keep it an S for 1.5 uh, for many, many reasons. But boys axe works phenomenally well with it, and uh, you're gonna end up seeing, you know, how good this actually is. So my skills are just kind of across the board, just uh, your standard turrets and powers. I'm not really looking for anything in particular. Uh, typically when I get shrapnel axes, I take predator and initiative, but I wanted to try out networking just to see how it would work because boys axe, if I snare it on an enemy and then use the range functionality on the boys axe on another enemy, then um, I could end up seeing some results.
So you can see right there the little laser. Um, so both enemies actually ended up uh, taking a lot of damage. So I could snare on one enemy and then focus on the other, and that enemy that's snared is still taking damage. So that's really cool. And so I'm going to drop the decoy and uh, let the field experiment just kind of uh, that, and then uh, let my double cross pneumatic finish off the rest. And I have no idea if Boyzax got buffed and I didn't realize it, but it's really strong. In 1.2, actually, it was one of the best weapons in the entire game because when so when you throw the Boyzax, it'll stick to an enemy and you re and you recall it and it does the same amount that it does when you uh, stick the enemy. In 1.2, it was actually double the amount and they nerfed it because double Boyzax runs were completely broken at the time. Uh, but... Yeah, it's it's still really good. I thought it was going to be pretty bad, but no, it's it's actually still phenomenal. So I opted not to change my boys axe there. It was all double purple, and one thing you're going to notice is I actually get really good amulet luck. I get really good uh, weapons luck as well, um, and that rarely happens. Not and and that's not not just a me thing. That's just the dead cells thing. <laughs> And I actually take this one because 50% is always nice to have. Uh, I'm not anticipating being hit, and I'm very, very lucky to have not gotten hit by the um, by the uh, box. So that was also really nice. So the last hit on the uh, shrapnel axis actually does a lot. Uh, so whether it's melee or range, it always does a lot of damage. So you can see that right here. And that's really nice uh, because and I will grab that boy's axe here because I don't. I, I just didn't want to waste money the first time around. But and that boy's uh, sorry, not the boy's axe. That shrapnel axe is. You can see like how good it is functionally right there. Because what I was able to do was, um, I was able to use my range first on the uh, bombardier, and then after that, what I did was use uh i was able to roll and then i could use the melee function on it so like i said like it's very versatile i get my range in and then i also get my uh melee in at the same time and i'm going to try to make use of both of those in this run this is both the showcase for shrapnel axes mainly shrapnel axes but it's also a showcase for the boys axe too because i just want to show people how good it is still just because there's no double anymore it doesn't mean that it isn't still viable and uh, I definitely was not intending on aggroing that uh, runner. But the melee uh, hit for shrapnel does quite a bit of damage. And runners have about average bulk, I would say. So yeah, the boy's axe is doing a great job of just snaring enemies. And it just keeps me at a good range. I can even make use of Tranquility if I wanted to. I don't on this run, but it is an option in the future if I want to do that. Shots Pierce, I wouldn't say it's a must for Shrapnel Axes, but it, it really, really helps. Especially for areas like Promenade when there's a lot of flying enemies. Um, shrapnel axes, you can jump and because of the quick release you're able to uh, get it done pretty quickly.
It's a really cool looking weapon too, I just want to say that. That infantry bow would be nice, but I really just wanted to use the boy's axe instead. It's objectively a better weapon. Very surprised I didn't get hit there. The 13 2 and 2 is it's pretty solid right now. At this point, I'm realizing that my boy's axe is actually doing a lot of damage. So. And I think it's partially, like, I have a level 7 double tactics, but also I have a really good scroll count. And we're going to take that challenge rift, and challenge rifts are their trip. <laughs> and we also get a nice looking uh, double double purple, so we are going to be taking that, but I, I'm going to leave that for now just so I can get, I, I have a little bit more health. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know how I got hit on either of those, but that's fine. Like there, there's some healing options at the beginning of the stage, so I'm not that worried. But one fifteen and two. Uh, we're looking good right now. This first part of the run, I decided just to go full glass cannon. Uh, but one thing to note about shrapnel is that the melee, if you hit an, if you hit an enemy with a melee attack, the shards don't go through the enemy. It's literally just the sword. So, I think that's one thing I would like to see fixed with it, uh, is that the shards will still go through, but then I guess, like, a, I guess that might be tough to program, because it would be a melee attack, and then the shards would also be coming out of the enemy. I don't know. But, I mean, it's already an amazing weapon as it is, so. I don't know. A lot of people don't like it. I, I can see why people don't like it, but I think for me, it's just... I, I see... I've used this a few times now, and granted, you do kind of have to build around it a little bit, but you still have to, like, kind of have good support for it. Like, the tentacle run, I had the tentacle, obviously, but I also had wolf trap and uh, double cross bomatic on that. Um, I also, you know, I had predator, I had initiative. Uh, these are all, like, really good skills, and uh, definitely taking the owl. I don't know why I struggled with that so much. The owl was obviously the right choice here. The double cross pneumatic was it was a pretty bad one. So, and we're gonna actually get a uh, purple um, dual stat scroll. So that's also really nice. So we're actually gonna be at 16, 16 headed into prison depths. That's one of the highest uh, damage outputs I've ever had. 1.4 or not. You can see networking kind of do a little bit right there. It doesn't end up serving that much of a purpose for me. And I think it's just a shrapnel axis thing. Maybe if I was more intentional about it, I could have done it, but there was it just it just didn't feel like there was a point. But we can finally uh, hit up prison depths and oh well we're, we we got to heal first actually because there is a uh, nice looking uh, drumstick. I think I said on the last run that I was going to uh, change my food options to something else. Whatever has the guts on it, uh, I forgot to do it. <laughs> but
But yeah, like it. I I think that you know the mutations are a little tricky for this type of build because you need to find what works for you best, and that can be like a variety of different things, and it really depends on like what you want to run. So that's also something that like I was trying to figure out as the run went on. So I'm going to take this level 9. Yes, the 50% technically is more, but, you know, my build isn't set exactly the way I want it yet. So I still am going to need to, you know, keep, you know, some sort of, like, good damage regardless. And level 9 is way better than level 5 on every front. Because at some point, I'm going to get hit. And at this point, starting now, anytime I take a hit is going to be devastating. So I need to not get hit, basically. And, uh, run almost ended right there. I was like a split second away. <laughs> So we clear out that curse quickly, and that's shrapnel axe is just being so good right there. And it's nice because I can actually just like get away from enemies. Like, I don't need to be around enemies all the time. I can just spam this. And having another drumstick there is going to be really nice. And uh, it's a good thing because uh, there's going to be some stuff coming up. Imagine if the bomb from Decoy actually hurt you in return. I mean, it would make it probably the single-handedly worst uh, thing in the game. But actually, networking worked really well right there. So that was really cool. So that's our challenge rift. So we are definitely taking that right now because uh, there's more enemies left. And if I get hit, then I can just go back and take the drumstick. But I can only get hit once. That's the thing. And so I take the green just so, again, I just take less damage. It doesn't even matter. I'm just going to be taking a lot of damage in at this point. And uh, here I just get a bit of bad luck. I just didn't... I probably should have scouted with my head, but... But one hit uh, did 59%, so... Yeah, we, we can't get hit the rest of the, the rest of the uh, challenge rift. And uh, we make it through, and uh, we can actually just go back and uh, take our little drumstick. And that's why it's important to take amulets that are off color for the challenge rifts, because uh, I only took I. I mean, 59% is a lot, but I would have taken even more, probably 70%, if not for the fact that I had um, that I had two green instead of two purple. The decoy being amazing as usual. That is such a weird mob of enemies for me. <laughs> Alright, so elite time. I haven't seen the elite last raider in a long time. 
and uh, this is actually the box one, but uh, we do get the kill. And uh, the box only generated while I was outside, so I actually wouldn't take damage from that. So that's also really nice. Even the ground pound is doing like crazy amounts of damage. I don't know what the biter saw or what the uh, knife thrower saw because he was under the ledge. But initiative is doing well right now. And I'm at enough uh, tactic scrolls where I can just use my head on the masker and uh, not be affected too much. And now it's an elite uh, slasher, so. Yeah. But Owl finishes it off, so uh, we're good there. I only saw that uh, Rampager at the last second. And again, because it's Prison Depths, if I get hit by the Rampager, I'm not going to be able to get out of it, so I'm dead as soon as that happens. But we are in Ossuary now, and uh, I, I, you know, the, the nice thing about Shrapnel Axes is that with the thornies, I really don't have to bother with um, trying to, you know, hit it up front or anything. I can just either ground pound it or I can just shoot from afar and I should be fine. But that heavy turret is actually going to carry me a really, really long way because it generates a toxic cloud and does 100% to poison. So we'll be fine. And so Hunter's Instinct is going to be uh, really useful in a variety of ways. Because Owl is going to be hitting enemies all over the place. So I can just turn on the Owl whenever I want. Uh, Shrapnel Axis has the uh, range functionality, which I'm going to be using more and more as this run goes on. And I'm also going to be um, using the Boy's Axe. But that'll uh, decrease the cooldown pretty significantly as well. So uh, that wasn't even like 10 seconds, and we already shaved off 20 seconds off that cooldown. So we're, we're good to go. And I'm going to leave enemies on the map just because I just don't want to um, be in a position where I have to take a curse. And that's looking nice. So we get some extra health, and we can uh, proceed. But melee tactics, just by design, is super glass cannon. It's all about just hitting enemies as hard as you can. And fast. It's it, These runs are always fast. I have to say, for... So I ended up rolling and then getting in that uh, little spot right there. But... For new players, that, that would be really hard to find, because uh, I know because I've played this game so many times, but a new player won't be able to figure that out. I need to get rid of these biters at some point. 
I'm, I'm very lucky that the biters never, like, actually triggered the, uh, shockers during this, uh, Ossuary trip. Because they're always gonna come because they're coming from the owl. And Boy's Axe is just killing enemies all by itself right now. So I have two extremely dangerous weapons with me. I mean, it also helps that I have 18 tactics right now, so... Hmm. 19 now. But I always have so much fun using the shrapnel axes. Like, I really, really do. And uh, you're going to see uh, the biters uh, start to uh, trigger the shockers. Luckily, I saw it well beforehand, before it actually triggered, so I wasn't, like, remotely affected by it. Oh, and by the way, so if you want to uh, unlock the shrapnel axes, they drop from demons. Boy's Ox, I think it dropped from the ground shaker? One sec. So on Zero Boss Cell, the easiest way to do that is just to hit up caverns on Zero Boss Cell if you just want to unlock the enemies. Uh, shielded Lacerator, so... Hmm. We'll see how it goes. It goes fine. And we get a triple, get a triple amulet. Like my, my luck with these uh, scrolls has been great so far. And it's gonna even out over the course of the run, honestly. Like, because I'm gonna need health at some point, so. So side note, in Ossuary, if you only get, uh, what is it, if you get two regular chests and the uh, optional curse, not the optional, but the extra curse is not going to be there. If you only get one uh, regular chest, then the other one is going to be the curse. So, fun fact. So networking is doing stuff, it's just not doing enough, I feel. But it's so nice, because if I want, then I can go for full-on uh, ranged, or I can go for full-on melee. And it's so nice. Like, it just feels fun to do. Like, I always enjoy using this weapon, but I've actually never used it in a uh, brutality sense before, so I really want to try that sometime. I've literally never used it in brutality. I've only ever used it in um, tactics. Weirdly enough, and I think it's just because of the, the dual function that it serves. It's much better as a tactics weapon, in my opinion. Because it works with Hunter's Grenade. And uh, so we get that extra curse. So, we get two challenge rifts, we get an extra curse. Uh, we're high on damage right now. We're already past where we where we need to be for Hand, for hand of the King God Concierge. I, I always say Hand of the King. I always call every enemy Hand of the King. I don't know why I do that. It's a like, really, really bad habit, and I need to stop it. We're going to unload our uh, turret boys. And uh, keep in mind, we also have another curse that we need to do. The two boss cell curse. So... Uh, I need to really, like, leave enemies on the map here. And uh, I'm very grateful that the Owl took care of that shield bear, because I, I honestly didn't see it. But I'm at a point where I'm just one-shotting shield uh, failed experiments with... Um, the ground pound. So that, that just goes to show how much damage I'm actually doing here. 
But Explorer's Instinct hits, and now I can actually see what my cursed chest is. So, we're good to go. So we're going to be at 25 heading into uh, heading into concierge. I almost said Hand of the King again. It's just a weird thing with me. I don't know why I keep saying it. Imagine if there was a challenge rift here. There might have been, but I didn't see it. But imagine if I took a challenge rift and I got hit. I'd be at 1 HP. And for some stupid reason, I, think it, I thought it was a great idea to take the stupid elite on. One of my worst ideas yet. But uh, I'm very lucky to not get hit, and the owl takes care of everything else for me. And uh, we're done with curses for this one, thankfully. Again, the buyers are just triggering enemies right now. I, I need to get rid of it as soon as I can. And my damage count is so high right now that that shocker goes down in like, like less than two seconds. <laughs> like that's Hokuto's bow type of uh, damage on the shocker. Like it's it's pretty awesome. And even that spawner just dies to one hit on the heavy turret. That's only a level six turret too. Like, I'm going to be taking that turret for pretty much the entirety of this run. Now I can sit back and relax at 100% health, and I'm good to go. And what's nice about this concierge fight, again, shrapnel axes and boys axe are ranged. I can just, I can just avoid even having to deal with uh, fighting this uh, thing up close. So that's going to be really, really nice for me. That decoy was very tempting, but no. And so these altars all have the same price now. So depending on what the highest priced item is, I think that's the one that'll be the price. I think that's how it is now. Don't quote me on it, but I think that's the case. And, and, and honestly, that's I'm okay with that because, um, you know, there were times when I accidentally sold the wrong item. I don't think it really changes much, but I think it's a nice little quality of life thing. That thing is just running toward, jump towards me when I wasn't expecting him to. I almost got hit right there too. Like I was on the very edge of the uh, of the of the aura. And again, because I have so little health right now, like anything is going to do a lot of damage to me. But uh, we know hit that thing easily, and we can just move on. I think concierge only drops two now. Huh. Or is it three? He was dropping three at one point. I don't know if it decreased. If it is, then I didn't catch it in the patch notes. Uh, but yes, we are taking that. It's one less point in tactics, but my tactics count is already so high. But I'm just going to reroll it to see what synergy I get. And yeah, uh, shots leave trail flames and burning, so basically I'm just going to one-shot everything with that boy's axe. 
And I think I have a couple weapons that do additional burning damage. Oh, uh, it's just the owl right now. The owl's already doing its thing. I would have taken that light speed probably if it um, if it didn't have the biters. But on tactics build, I, I desperately avoid biters because they they will ruin the run for me. If there's solid wall, typically the uh, biters or the bombers not going to aggro you. Or well, sol solid wall that's adjacent. I don't know. It's weird. Bombers, bombers are just weird sometimes. But I'm one shotting bombers on the down smash right now, so we're we're good. And uh, Boyzak's going to do a great job of snaring right here, so. Yeah, uh, easy kill. I really should check out these lore rooms sometimes, because I know the story of Dead Cells, I've just never been like, I've never really cared that much. Um, so I take that one because I get both Poison and Burn Synergy on it, which is better than what I have right now with the level 9. Less, slightly less damage, but in reality it's not really. So yeah, the shrapnel axis does even more now. And I take that one uh, because if you saw my last run, um, I had a dodge, a dodging, uh, gets the dodging creates a bomb, and uh, what ended up happening was uh, I accidentally triggered an elite that was like way down below. So don't want to deal with that ever again. I was actually pretty scared that that was going to hit me right there. Uh, but I'm going to take that one too. I'm getting a lot of triple amulets. Like, this is unheard of for me, honestly. The owl is just 
massacring enemies right now. And uh, thankfully, I finally got some health, so uh, that that is a significant amount for me. And uh, we're going to deal with Weaver Worms for the first time in a long time. And there's so many of them that the owl actually uh, cools down completely. So I'm going to turn it back on. Uh, we got through all of them, thankfully. I think one would have done like at least 20% on me. It's because I'm so glass cannon right now. Weaver worms are scary. <laughs> but I wasn't cursed, so... In worst case scenario, I, I had a kebab and then I could have gone to the food shop because I have a lot of money. So I was actually okay on that. Now it's Sepulchre time. And I like Sepulchre because um, sometimes I'm undecided on whether or not I want to go to Giant or Clock Tower. And so I get that chance to choose right there. And so Sepulchre should be pretty manageable because my damage is really good at this point. Um, there's not much I'm changing with this build. Uh, maybe I'll get like a better owl or something, but besides that, you know, I'm just going to be rolling into Sepulchre. Uh, everything is doing a lot of damage right now. The key is just not to get hit by Cleavers and the Kamikazes. That's really it right now. And I'm actually doing okay on health. I mean, it's a tactics build, so like one hit is going to do a lot, but in general, like I'm doing okay on health right now. And I do uh, redo my mutations. I opt for the Crow's Foot. Not a big fan of Crow's Foot in general, but on this build it works. I am going to take that up until Hand of King, uh, because I can't deal with Hand of King when he's slow, but Timekeeper when she's slowed is a lot easier. And because this level is a bit chaotic, it's also going to be nice just to, um, you know, handle these enemies. Cause, just because they're slowed. Especially like elites and stuff. And uh, this is a little scary. I, in all honesty, I shouldn't have gone like this, but you know, I, damage is done. Of course, they dropped me right underneath that, uh, the spike. And then I got another spike puzzle. And I actually hate this one because sometimes I mess up that jump. And I, I overcommit on the jump, and then I end up hitting the spikes to the, uh, to the right side. When I do that jump, I hit the spikes to the right side sometimes. And because of the way my health is right now, I'll end up taking a lot of damage. Like, at least 80 to 90 percent. So, eh. I'm going to leave that 4BC uh, door just in case I get multiple curse chests. Or if I even get the singular curse chest and then I run out of enemies. And I'm going to leave the tonic on there just, uh, just in case I get hit. I'm pretty confident in this build at this point. Knife throws are actually going to also do a lot of damage to me. And there would have been a better use of my crow's foot. I could have just uh, rolled out of the way and then he would have slowed down. 
So I could have uh, done that instead, but I was okay there. I got the key rather quickly, so I'm just going to keep on trucking. And at this point, since I'm doing a lot of damage, it, it's probably better that uh, the dual scrolls I get are health. Or, uh, so the dual scrolls would be brutality slash survival. And that's probably better than getting than like getting more damage at this point because I'm already like getting a lot of damage off on enemies. I'm one shotting everything at, right now. So even with the uh, 1.5 nerf to scrolls, like it's harder in some respects, but it's also like I'm just wrecking everything. And so that's one uh, dual stat. So I'm gonna get my health, and that's also and that's really good. I'm sitting at 30 right now, and I haven't hit my curse chest yet, so I'll be at at least like 32 or 33, because um, I also got my, uh, I'm also going to be able to get a couple more scroll fragments here, and then I get two from Timekeeper, and that's exactly what I was looking for in my owl, so I get more stats and a better owl, uh, the only thing I was really concerned about was the money, but no, like uh, this owl, or this uh, owl is looking really, really good. And this is a really difficult spike puzzle. It's harder than it looks. And there's also enemies down below. Somehow I've hit all the knife throws. Owl is thankfully taking care of these kamikazes for me. And that's the other dual stat. So, um, you know, usually I would say, unfortunately, I didn't get what I wanted in terms of uh, getting more tactics. But since I'm already doing great on tactics, it's better that I just get health instead. So this was my second official run with the Shrapnel Axes uh, for today. It was just, um, it was just different because I wasn't using boy's axe. I instead was using, um, the carbine instead. And randomly in a run, I, uh, realized that, oh, boy's axe is actually freaking great with this weapon. So let's just keep rolling with that. And that's how this build got started. This is actually one of the most fun builds I've ever had. Like, it, and a lot of it is due to my like insane scroll count, but it's also due to the fact that like it just the synergy is so perfect. And even that mob, it was like six enemies, and I just killed them all with one strike. So initiative, initiative is solid. <laughs> initiative is great. And typically, what I try to do here is because there's always going to be guaranteed enemies is I try to uh, get to a point where I can like actually kill enemies in the same door, but I'm not but because of this generation, I'm not gonna be able to do that, unfortunately. I mean I could have like let those uh, dark trackers follow me up, but I generally don't really do that. Uh, it just feels unnecessary. And uh, we finally pick up our curse chest, but it is very, very late in the levels. But I still have that 4 BC door that I haven't on, uh, I haven't looked into yet, so I have more than enough enemies to deal.
Again, just Owl is just helping out a lot right now. And that's it for Curse Chest for the rest of the run. Unless I get the one in High Peak Castle, but that, that never shows up, so... I'm gonna go check out what's hanging out in that 4BC door, just because I got through this level really easily, so I'm pretty confident that I'm not gonna get hit. And usually when I say stuff like that, or when I think stuff like that, I'm absolutely gonna get hit, but um, it'll be fine. I'm just gonna power up the owl, but there is an elite, so that elite's looking nice. And it just, that, that turret just kills all by itself, so. Well, I think the owl did do a little bit of damage, but still, that was awesome. Uh, I would have not. I would have liked to not get hit by that uh, shield bearer. So. Luckily, there was a lot of light around me, so I was good to go there. And uh, we are going to go to our friend, the Timekeeper, now. I haven't seen her in a while, but first, we gotta hit up the shop, because I'm probably not... I don't know, do I spend here? Depends. Depends on what I'm getting. No, I don't get anything here. I think I was just like, I'm already doing a lot of damage anyways. No point. And uh, we are going to take that shrapnel axis because the difference between X and... Or do I take it? No, I don't take anything here. I probably could have, but I decided not to. Yeah, because I still have poison synergy. So Timekeeper's going to be a little tricky... Uh, just because, well, one hit's gonna kill me, but I want to make sure she's not able to fire off any of her, uh, uh, shurikens. But this is doing a lot of damage. I, I kill her even before she gets to that final phase, which I never do. Like, that's how powerful this build is. Like, it's, it's just nutty to me how crazy this build is. I'm not even on pace for 40, too. And I'm going to be at 34 now because of the, uh, the, uh, whatchamacallit, the scroll fragments. Although I will say, Hand of the King should be dropping scroll fragments. I don't know why he isn't. Like, I know it's because, like, he's the final boss on 4BC and 4 and 5BC are implemented, like, literally the same way outside of Astro Lab and Collector. But still, like, it, it would have been nice. And here I opt for uh, going for Poison Synergy just because everything does damage to Poison right now. So I would rather just keep it that way. And we're going to still keep Crow's Foot because uh, High Peak Castle is better with Crow's Foot. And uh, High Peak Castle does scare me. I, I haven't been going there a lot lately because I've been fighting Giant a lot and then I just skip, I just skip Giant. Or I skip a high peak castle just to go fight the, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, the Hand of the King. And see, now when I'm trying to remember Hand of the King, I don't remember Hand of the King. gonna re-roll 
and that is exactly what I want. So we took a level 6 all the way up to High Peak Castle, and we get the exact same thing, only with more affixes and burn synergy. So, yeah, that is an infinitely better heavy turret, does a lot more damage. So, we're sitting good right now. For me, I just have to be really careful of a few things. Uh, the main is uh, the little maces that uh, kind of spin around while you're trying to kill enemies. So, to deal with that, I'm going to use my head a lot and then just move more slowly than I have been. Because I've been doing this run pretty fast. I'm going to go to my right first to see if there's any enemies there. Because, yeah. And it's a good thing I did that. <laughs> I don't really know what to do here. Because there's maces everywhere. I'm not going to battle those two enemies up there because that just seems unnecessarily risky. Like that, like that Rampager, if he uh, gets his way and he aggroes towards me, he's going to start... Uh, he's going to push me towards spikes. So, Because that's happened before. When he jumps, he pushes you. So I don't want to deal with that. We're just going to go for the key right away. Keep in mind, he is poison, so I'm doing a, even more damage with the uh, with the shrapnel. And Thorny's up first, and we dispose of him quickly. I don't know why I did that. Because if that mace hit me, then I'm in a world of trouble. Because there's no enemies to get my uh, recovery from. So that would have been down to like 20% at, at best. So we got even more health, which is always nice. And now Boy's Axe is doing enough damage to where I can just uh, kill enemies like that. So what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do first is just kill all the enemies. There's an elite bomber up there, so I want to make sure that I can clear out all the enemies first before dealing with them. Again, just being really, really careful and using my head on everything. I was frightened of that jump. It doesn't look hard, but like if you make a small mistake, then you're you're done. Three Inquisitors are not fun to deal with. So 
we take care of that pretty easily. Boy's Axe snared one of them, and uh, for the other, I just kept spamming the Shrapnel Axes. And uh, we have one more key left. And now it's just going to be a matter of just trying to find where to go. <laughs> and I have two more scrolls to find. I only saw that Belmar at the very, very last second. And Al was helping a lot right now. More than I care to admit. And that was also uncomfortably close. So I jumped down here just in case there's any Inquisitors that I need to know about. Luckily for me, the Rampager doesn't actually, like push me. And luckily for me, that's another elite bomber, and they're pretty manageable, because they rarely ever hit. And I get even more health. So now we're doing good on health, we're doing good on damage, and uh, we're, we're pretty much set for this run. I almost got hit so many times by that, uh, by that, uh, what, that, uh, that one guy. The, uh, what's it called? The, the Lancer. For some reason I was chipping and I thought that uh, all the way back there was a blue was blue, but no, it, it was uh, it was it was not blue. I was looking for something that could uh, do uh, shots explode into toxic cloud and was double purple, but I was just pushing my luck there. That uh, and that that is not uh, blue. That is in fact red. And now I'm just going to let all these guys aggro up because there is the spikes. And they're just going to keep killing themselves until they... You know. And uh, all the rest of the enemies are down there. Not going to fight them. Ever since my Curse Sword run, I've started to understand the value of uh, not fighting enemies. And I'm just going to let my uh, Owl finish that up. And that's the nice thing about the Boy's Axe is that it, it's working both as like a primary and a secondary weapon right now. And my shrapnel axe is doing most of the damage in terms of like using my weapons, but I like the boy's axe too in this case, in this uh, run. I had no idea where to go, honestly. I feel like I feel like Explorer's Instinct should come earlier, like about like sixty percent of the level instead of like ninety percent up through the level. That's just like first world problem type of thing though.
And I finally start using my big brain of mine, and I realize, oh yeah, there's an entire, uh... There's an entire, uh... Thing of enemies down here. And there's a uh, nice little, uh, chest for me. And finally my explorer's instinct kicks in, so now I can start heading towards the end. That was unnecessarily risky, because <laughs> uh, if I got hit, I, I die, so, because I don't have a shield to uh, parry the guardian, so, yeah, that, that would have sucked for me. But uh, we're, we're done with Hypey Castle, we, we uh, escape without taking a hit, and then I realized I forgot to take the key. Now we gotta go back to the doors and figure out where I missed the key. But luckily with Explorer's Rune activating, I can just uh, simply figure out if I took the key there or not, and turns out I didn't. So, now we just uh, keep trying doors until we find it. I guess I forgot to pick it up on the first one. But now we can get out of High Peak Castle. Adds to the drama, right? The Hand of the King is going to be a little weird, just because his one swipe and then the ground pound, when he comes down, he can hit you if you're right under him. So you have to be really, really careful about that. But other than that, I'm not really scared of any other attack that he's going to do. And we get rid of Crow's Foot here. And I'm just kind of figure out what I want. Because I also need to worry about Astrolab too. And I think uh, Support is the right one as well. Or what do I take? Yeah, I take Support, right? Take support, right? I take support, right? <laughs> Please tell me I didn't- yeah, okay, that's what I thought. That's what I thought, okay. I would have been weirded out if I took a uh, scheme or something. So yeah, like I said, um, the main issue is really just going to be uh, with Hand of the King. It's just about just anticipating moves. I always say that, but Hand of the King, it's really, you can't control it. You just got to anticipate the moves. So we set our turret right away, and this is doing a lot of damage. So I make sure to uh, hit the platform, because I only have two jumps on this, on this build. <laughs> Now we get the uh, wave of elites, and we get a slasher, unfortunately. So I don't know why why he was taking so long, but but now I can just uh, spam, and we're done. Pretty quick fight, pretty easy. Um, 
I was being a little reckless because I knew the bombs were coming, but I knew that I was also going to get the kill. So I wasn't too worried. But yeah, Astrolab time now, so this will be fun. We get another boy's axe, and uh, I, I'll just take the flaming. Might as well. Because everything has burn, burn synergy at this point, and the uh, turret has um, inflammable oil too, so it's even more flames. And uh, I was scared that I uh, almost fell to my death right there. I was pretty lucky with that Magistrate. Because the skulls uh, actually push you too. I mean, that is a nice meat skewer, but it's a meat skewer. The meat skewer sucks, so no. Yeah, Owl was helping a lot here. See, if I had taken Predator, I couldn't use Owl. So once I saw that there was an Owl in this run, and I saw that it was actually helping a lot, I decided, okay, let's just uh, not take Predator on this run. Unlike what I usually do with uh, Shrapnel Axes, which is take Predator. Because I don't really... Because Owl will block my invisibility. I'm just going to let the Owl just kill for me. He can do my dirty work. Boy's Axe just snares it. It's like how I handled that uh, Elite Slasher. Back in High Peak Castle. Just better just to stay away from the magistrate. But the ground pound is one shotting, so I'm okay on that. Owls are really, really nice for librarians. And I'm gonna go all the way to the top and then down there to uh, kill the protector. Or the defender, I guess. And uh, that was actually the first time I had gotten hit since Prison Depths in that challenge rift. But because it's that little thing. Um, also, slammers are scary. But, uh, we're just gonna let my, uh, turret do the work, as well as my shrapnels, and then we're good. We've got everything. Um, but yeah, that was actually the first that I had taken since Prison Depths, and I got all my health back, because the overhead turrets don't do any damage. So, we're just not gonna count that as taking a hit. Even though I technically did. And uh, that's an easy take for me. And I know that I don't have a lot of bleed synergy, but here's the thing. 
I want more tactics on this run because I want overkill on my damage. I'm very selfish like that. Uh, but the other thing was, it's bleed synergy, and it does 60% to bleed. That's better than the 30% that I was getting. And the owl does damage to bleed. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it, obviously. And, uh, there was no real way I was gonna end up getting the money for any of those. So I was just like, ah, let's just move on with this. And also I needed enough money so that I could uh, reforge, uh, not reforge, I could uh, re uh, reset my mutations so that I could uh, get... Um, the emergency triage, so I need at least 50,000, which I won't get if I buy another item. I'll be at too low of a uh, uh, money count. And yes, spiders are there, but eh, not that big of a deal, honestly. I, uh, I got I got pretty lucky there uh, by not getting hit by any of those failed experiments, honestly. And now we're gonna aggro the bomber. Two shots, take it down. That was a nice shrapnel axis, but no, that would have been a very very bad take for me. Now we want to bring the slammer down here. Use the boys axe. And I, I lose my mind right here. Completely lose my mind. So stupid on me. There's no reason for me to do that. I should have just used my head like a normal person, but... Uh, two shots from those uh, little turrets thing brought me down to like 2% health, so... Eh, pretty bad. But I'm back to 100%, so we're fine. Totally fine. But that was my first real hit that I took since Prison Depths. So, not bad. Not bad. At all. We drop the turret. Bring down the slammers. Wait for it to come. And we have one more. And that kills itself. So we're just going to take our little things and then, uh... One more boss. And then we're set. And, uh, Collector should be pretty manageable. I'm not that worried about the fight. Um, it's just a matter of what mutations I take. So, probably support, dead inside, just so I can take more than one hit. And a triage. Because, uh, initiative doesn't really matter. Um, uh, Crow's Quit would suck, and 
you know, just it didn't wouldn't have made sense to me to do anything else. But I'm finishing this run in less than an hour, so that's really, really good. But I'm going to play it a little bit slower against uh, Collector. Slower than usual, anyways. We already have him healing, so that's really good. And uh, we're doing good. We already have him near the uh, second healing point. And uh, just healed, so yeah, we're, we're, we're getting a lot of damage off. So he's stuttering like that because he has the boys axe stuck in him. And uh, this will be the last healing phase, so now all we need to do is just get him down and then make him heal and then we're set. And this is it right here. And uh, get a pretty sick boys axe final hit on him, and uh, that's it. That's the run. Um, no hit every single boss. It's always nice. Um, and yeah, pretty great run, honestly. Uh, I only got hit. I didn't get hit from prison depths all up until my careless mistake in Astrolab. Uh, no hit all the bosses. Got a good amount of. Got a great amount of scrolls. I uh, did a couple challenge rips, and yeah, honestly, um, I. Highly, highly recommend this one. Pretty fun. Shrapnel Axes is ace. It's really, really good. Uh, but thank you guys as usual for joining me. Um, feel free to uh, like, subscribe for more Dead Cells content. Uh, links to all my socials are in the description as well as the build. And have a great night, everybody.